The law of assumption and the law of attraction have a fair amount of similarities in theory, but yet they are vastly different in practice. You may have already experienced a bit of confusion as to which law is superior to the other, or better yet, the one that is for you in your life. You saw the title. You know what team I'm on. So let's dive into the details as to why. But first, I'd like to welcome you to Here Nor There. This channel is dedicated to empowering you through the art of conscious creation, shaping the life that you aspire to live. What is the law of attraction? We are governed by numerous scientific laws in this universe. The law of thermodynamics, the laws of motion, the law of gravity, just to name a few. We are also governed by universal laws, the law of attraction being the most talked about. Some years ago, I fumbled my way into the law of attraction. I had something akin to a spiritual awakening, which is a more refined way of saying that my romantic life had hit rock bottom. Dumpster juice, if you will. In a search for answers, I found myself engrossed in the law of attraction community. The law of attraction is the more well-known of the two new thought beliefs. The law of attraction states that like attracts like, and not only that, but you have to believe what you're seeking is possible to obtain. You have to become a vibrational match for what you desire. If you do not, something better will replace it since nature abhors a vacuum. You will attract something else on that vibrational frequency. I found myself immersed in an ocean of life-changing philosophy. The law of attraction gained mainstream popularity in 2006 when the book entitled The Secret hit store shelves. Soon thereafter, many law of attraction gurus burst into the scene. Abraham Hicks, Bob Proctor, and Joe Dispenza, just to name a few. In my experience, the law of attraction heavily focuses on feelings, your current emotional state. In order to manifest your desires precisely and consistently, you must already feel positive. You must already feel happy. You must already feel loved, abundant, filled with joy. Of course, this is just a high-level synopsis of the law of attraction. Let's quickly move into the law of assumption. What is the law of assumption? The law of assumption's most prominent teacher was Neville Goddard. And he taught that it is our expectations, our assumptions, our beliefs and identity in life that creates our 3D reality. Therefore, if we want to change our lives, we change our beliefs, assumptions and identity. The law of assumption also speaks of the term everyone is you pushed out. Basically, everyone is a mirror to you. In the simplest terms, people behave, feel, act, and think whatever you assume them to behave, feel, act, and think. Everyone is going to show up in your reality exactly how you assume they are going to show up, good or bad. Neville Goddard wrote the majority of his books during the mid-1900s, starting with his first, At Your Command, in 1939. In his teachings, Neville dissects the Christian Bible comprehensively, viewing it strictly and simply as parables teaching humanity the pathway to spiritual awakening and true salvation. So, what's the difference? To me, simply put, the law of attraction teaches that there is a higher power out there in the universe. This power has been referred to as the source, God, the vortex. In contrast, the law of assumption teaches that you are the higher power, that your imagination is God, that you and only you get to decide what reality you experience. The law of attraction teaches that you can obtain any of the desires if you are a vibrational match. If you are not, something better or more suited for you will replace it. The law of assumption teaches that there is an infinite number of realities where you have your desires. You are just embodying the state of consciousness that aligns with the reality and persisting in that state until it reflects into your physical world. With that being said, why do I personally prefer the law of assumption over the law of attraction? I may trigger a few viewers here, but this is what I've discovered through my own personal experience, years of personal experience. My reasoning is very simple. The law of assumption, once practiced, explained all of my victories and failures in life. That allowed me to create a formula to consistently manifest whatever I wanted. It was the one concept that I learned which focused on placing power within me rather than requiring me to replace it outside of myself into another entity. The law of assumption also opened the door for me to learn more about my subconscious and how it shapes my reality effectively leading me to reprogram my identity and my beliefs using a couple of different techniques. Although feelings are utilized in the visualization process, I found the law of attraction places too much of an importance on feeling good 
all the time in order to receive those desires. In the recent past, I had a few major desires manifest when I was not in a good mood, in a good vibration, or even in a positive mindset, which proves that you do not have to be in a certain mood or vibration to manifest. You're doing it all the time, whether you're conscious of it or not. The law of attraction teachers have also incorporated the built-in disclaimer that if you somehow don't get your desire, then it wasn't meant for you. It wasn't a vibrational match and something better is on the way. Lastly, the law of attraction relies heavily on many techniques that come across as sort of gimmicky to me. 55-5, 33-3, the 369 method, the two cup manifestation method, vision boards. I've seen it all and I've tried a few. I'm not knocking any of these techniques. Hell, if they work for you, keep going. In fact, I learn about scripting through the Law of Attraction community, and I still utilize it to this day. The difference is that after utilizing the Law of Assumption, I've learned that the power is not in the technique, but within me. The technique is just a form of expression, and it's not needed at all. I have nothing against the Law of Attraction. In fact, I believe it's better to practice that than just allowing your life to be on autopilot doing nothing, just watching things go by. There are quite a few teachers that I still admire and listen to from time to time. However, for me, the law of attraction produced inconsistent results. I felt a vibe of toxic positivity when engaged in it. I believe I had to always feel good to manifest. And in my belief, it's not the entire truth. I don't always feel amazing, but I'm always content because my state of consciousness is already aligned with my desires. I am resting in the state of already having what I desire, which is a much easier state to control day in, day out. It's just a matter of time. So I'm enjoying the ride until I get there. There's no one to beg, appease, or petition to. It's all within my control, and that is true self-empowerment. In conclusion, these are my experiences with the laws. I may or may not understand every little nuance behind the law of attraction, but I respect whatever side of the aisle that my fellow creators fall on. The law of assumption and Neville Goddard's teachings resonated with me as soon as I heard the first lecture. Adhering to it and only it has led me to consistent and fulfilling results in every corner of my reality every time, and I intend that it does so for you as well. That's our discussion for today. I am Sean, and you are neither here nor there. Thank you for your time.